What's up guys, Steven here. Welcome back to another video. So I've just unpacked my brand new Huawei Mate 30 and I was really surprised when I saw the Google Play Store on this device. This is because Trading Shenzhen has pre-installed it using the LC Play installer. But right now it's no longer possible to use this installer because it has been banned. And today in this video, we'll check out if this is really a security risk and dig a little bit deeper and check out why this installer has been banned. Now guys, here's my Huawei Mate 30 from China and as you can see, it is running the Google Play Store and this was pre-installed by Trading Zhenzhen, so yeah, they have installed it before shipping it out, which is pretty cool, using the LC Play installer. And some people said that the device ID is now blocked after the exploit has been um, removed and that you cannot download ap applications. But this is not true. As you can see, I can still download application even though they're verified by Play Protect. So if you have the Play Store on your device, it won't be removed yet and your device won't be blocked yet. So this is still working by 3rd of October. Then, yeah, how did this work? So basically you had to download an APK from the internet, which um, then was in your file manager, called here the uh, Google installer, as you can see, LC Play installer. And yeah, you just tap at it, it will install. Um, you have to grant a few permissions. It's doing here a check with the Huawei app gallery, but that, all, that is also no problem. And then, as you can see, installation successful. But right now, on the 3rd of October, it displays this message. Now, I cannot speak Chinese. If somebody can translate that, I would be really, really happy. But it doesn't matter which button you press, it will just do nothing or close the application. So they have removed the exploit, no longer working on the devices. And yeah, one of the reasons was that um, there was some shady thing going on. And first of all, um, if we check out here the security settings and we go here to um, more settings and here to device administrators, then you can see that this application basically installed a device administrator. So some random Chinese stuff here right over there to lock my screen, set storage encryption, disable cameras, disable some screen lock features, set permissions of management apps, set Wi-Fi direct and IR, and set the super trust list for other applications and set app categories. And this was why some people freaked out. So um, in order to revoke access, this is no problem at all, but you need to know it. You have to go to deactivate. And as you can see, now the device administrator um, is not device administrator anymore. And here you can see some more explanation of what would have been possible with all that. Anyway, um, after you're done, you can uninstall the application and yeah, as you can see, it's still saved. Let's just find my device on there. And the Play Store is still there, still working, fully working. But now let's dig a little bit deeper on how this actually worked. All right, guys, you've now seen how easy it was to use this installer. But now let's dig a little bit deeper and check out why it has been removed and why it was dangerous. Now, first of all, we need to check out how Android works. So on Android, you basically have two really important partitions. One is called data and the other one is called system. Data partition basically stores your user data, all the apps you install, um, kind of personal data, kind of app data. And this is also what gets wiped when you, for instance, um, install a custom ROM and tick the option wipe data. Then it's just wiping this partition. This works because um, this partition has read and write um, permissions. That means the user can read the data from the partition, but also write data onto the partition. Then there is the system partition. The system partition is basically um, read only. That means the user can only read the partition and not modify it. And this is really, really important. The permissions are basically here for security reasons. And also if a bootloader is locked, you can actually not touch the system partition. And the bootloader on the Huawei Mate 30 is locked. And yeah, that means we need to find another way to get into the system partition. So yeah, let's talk a little bit about history. Now on Xiaomi smartphones or other Meizu smartphones, phones for instance you could find a GMS installer so Google mobile services installer inside of the Chinese um, app store which was pre-installed on the devices now this is a very simple installer which is just putting the applications first of all into your data partition and then it's pushing it to the system image by so-called APK steps. So they have been placed inside of the ROM that it's possible to basically push the APKs from the data partition into the system partition and integrate it. On the Huawei Mate 30, this is not possible because it's not allowed, they are not implemented, and that means we need to find another way to get into the system partition. 
First of all, the system partition has a digital signature, so it's signed. That means in order, if you want to write something to the system partitions, you need to um, sign your file or your update. The same is basically also true for OTA updates, so over the air updates. They only work if they have the same signature as the system partition. So they also need to be signed with the same key as the system partition. Otherwise the system will say, this OTA update doesn't belong to our system and you are not able to install it. So in theory, it would be possible if Huawei pushes an OTA update in the future when the whole Trump drama is over and they're finally allowed to do business with Google again, that they push an OTA update, which um, yeah, has the same signature as the system, partition right now and just override it and integrate the Play Store and all the Google services. So it doesn't mean that you can never again install the Play Store, but well, first of all, the Trump drama has to be over and then Huawei can push an OTA update and do it. Anyhow, right now this is not possible, so we need to find another way and this was the way LC Play was using. All right, so if there are no APK steps included inside of the ROM, how did this installer do it? magic? Well, no, it had basically two permissions which are undocumented, so in order to um, push the APKs to the system image, and also it must have been signed, so it must have been signed with the same key as the system partition. So, well, if an application is signed with the same signature system, then you can easily install it without root access. Now, if you would have root access, things are different. But Huawei has locked the bootloader on the Mate 30 and right now there are no plans to actually unlock the bootloader. I'm pretty sorry about that, in my last video I said it's probably possible, but then Huawei just stepped back and said no, um, there are no plans for unlocking the bootloader. Because if they would allow to unlock the bootloader, you could actually boot a custom recovery, custom ROMs. With the custom recovery, you could actually just flash um, super user, get root access, and then things would be different because then you can modify the system partition. But as this is not possible, there had to be this other way using the signature of the system image. And this is why everybody freaked out. Because this signature is only known to actually um, the software maker like Google who built the ROM and also to the OEM like who customized the whole, the whole ROM from Google. And that's a big problem because this signature was included in a third party application which then got a lot of access to your phone using the APIs. And well, people were concerned that um, this could also happen with another third party application, that there could be really um, dangerous changes to your phone. But so far as I've seen, the only dangerous thing was this device administrator, which you could revoke. But still, um, it has now been banned. It's no longer possible. So don't search for a solution right now. If there will be a solution, I will keep you guys updated. All right. I really hope that you now could understand a little bit more on how this all worked. I would really appreciate if the whole Trump drama just stops and Huawei could push an OTA update and bring back um, the Play services um, onto our smartphones or if they would allow to unlock the bootloader so we can just go and flash custom ROMs which we cook ourselves or just from XDA and enjoy a beautiful phone with an even more beautiful ROM. All right guys, so if this happens, I'm super happy and this phone will be my daily driver. Anyway, um, I hope that you liked this video. If you liked it, please like it. If you want to see more, please subscribe and make sure to hit the bell to get all the notifications because YouTube is giving me a real hard time right now. And yeah, see you very soon in the next one. Bye.